God gives us everything we need for salvation, for righteousness, for sanctification, for grace, for mercy, for knowing Him, for talking to Him, for hearing Him. He gives us His Spirit so that we could walk with Him, so that we could talk with Him, so that we could hear His voice, so that we could know Him in a personal, intimate way. God has done everything He can do for you. He's given us the birds, the bees, the flowers and the trees. He's given us all things that are needful for life. He's given us the sunshine, the rain. He's given us oxygen. He's given us a body. He's given us even an ounce or a certain measurement of faith that we would, at some point in time, have the ability to make the choice to know Him or to not know Him. To come to Him with the realization that there is a Creator that's greater than we are, that is our God, with whom we have to deal with for eternity's sake. So that we would live not just in this physical body that we exist in, but that we would exist in a spiritual dimension that would go beyond this in such a way that it would be so much greater than what we experience right now. <clears throat> but in so saying that, when God did everything He could, He sat down and said, It is finished. It is accomplished. I have shown them the Father. I have shown them Myself. I have revealed the Word. I have been the living example. I will even come to them now and I will bring my spirit with me and I will reveal God to them if they would only ask. And you see, that's what you need to do. Because there comes a time where you have to put up or shut up. Because there's lots of people out there that will tell you a religious trip. They can tell you, oh, go to this church. Oh, don't go to that church. Oh, go over here. Oh, no, do this, but not that. Do this, but not this. You see, there's always someone telling you something to do. But what I want to know is, who do you know? Who do you talk to? Who do you relate to? In other words, it's nice to have the Bible. And I'm thankful for the Bible. It's nice to have the Word of God. I am thrilled to have the Word of God. It is great, personally, to have my faith based upon the Word of God. And I'm thrilled about that. But you know what? If that was all I had and I didn't have a relationship with Jesus, I would be an Orthodox Jew in a heartbeat. Because I loved it. It was great. It was a dynamic way of life that I loved and enjoyed the intellect, the intelligence, and the, the pragmatic, practical, spiritual way that an Orthodox lifestyle could be lived out. And I could see the spiritual dimension in it and the scientific application of it. But you see, it didn't have God in it. God was not real. Though everything else was fully alive to the utmost capacity of my mind to think, to consider, and to ponder. But without God real, it meant nothing to me. It was an interesting protective lifestyle. It was an interesting way to live your life. And I would have arranged my life accordingly and lived it to the utmost length of my days. But God was not in it. God was not there. I did not find God in the midst of it. So, while the Bible is nice to have, and religion is great, even in Christianity, whether it be in the denominations, or the churches, or the religions, or the non-denominations, or the evangelicals, don't tell me your trip. Don't lay on me your religious ideas. Tell me about who you know. Because if you don't know God, if you don't know Jesus in a personal, intimate way, then you're wasting my time. You're really just telling me more philosophy because you really haven't put the rubber where it meets the road. You haven't gone the extra mile to demonstrate the fact that God intervenes. Show me. That's what I would say to anyone. Show me. Because if you can't prove it, don't do it. That's what I wanted. You see, it was fine to see all these great revivals that go on. And I was kind of like, well, that's nice. But I didn't pay much attention to them. And that was great to see all these different ways that people were getting saved. And I said, well, that's nice, but I didn't pay much attention to them. But you know what? In my life, there were different times where God sent me to a person and said, Michael, what? <laughs> okay, go to that person. And I would go to them. 
and I would demonstrate that God was real. Because we put him on the line. Look, God, if you're real, show yourself. Demonstrate yourself in a way that could be manifested in such a way that only you could do it, and that person would know you in an intimate, personal way themselves. That's what I did. That's what I believe in. Because anyone can convince themselves of something. Anyone can talk themselves into something. Anybody can use the placebo effect on Christianity and pretend that they have a measure of faith and then exercise it in such a way that it looks like, ooh, they're saved. But you see, the reality of who God is is only demonstrated by the reality of Him fulfilling His Word. The Word of God becomes alive in an intervention that comes true in the life of the person that's reading it. If that person can't take the Word of God and demonstrate to you that it's real and alive in their life, then they are not a Christian. They're religious. They're a Christian religious person. Because without Jesus, you have only religion. So, don't get caught up in a lot of the religious zeal out there. Because there are people that are telling you to not follow that pastor or to worry about some new age this or worry about some crazy notion that they have about pointing fingers at each other. Because if God didn't tell them to do it, they're wasting their time. You get the point? If you don't have a relationship, you're wasting your time. You're going to hell. I don't care how good you are at following Pentecostal rules and regulations, Calvary Chapel's rules and regulations, anybody, it doesn't matter who it is, if you're following rules and regulations and just following a foreman and not the person, then you're failing with what God said He would do to you. Because He said, I will come in and live in you. Because that's what it all boils down to. You can take the entire Bible. Of course, now all my Bibles are on the other side. Oh, the camera. Not really. You can take the entire Bible and you could drop it, toss it in the lake, or throw it in the river. Because it all boils down to one thing. Knowing God. That's the entire scriptures. Cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Because He's revealing the Father. And as He reveals the Father, then we know God. Because if we've seen Jesus, we have seen God. Bottom line. So, Genesis talked about walking with God, talking with God, and being with God, because in that time they were not in sin. Now that we've been forgiven of sin, we are manifested to ourselves to be revealed as the sons and daughters of God, if it so be that the Spirit of God has come within us to change us into the image of His Son so that we would walk and talk with God. Because if you're not walking and talking with God, you're blowing it. You're failing. You've given up somewhere and you've settled for religion. Now, religion is good. Don't get me wrong. It is a wonderful lifestyle to live. It will protect you from a lot of the ills of society. It will establish your moral integrity. It will help you to guide you in the mores of decision-making process with which you will live a life that is conformable to societal norms within that parameters that you decide to live within them. But at the same time, religion can only take you to the platform of knowing God. Then you stand alone on the foundation of religion and God must intervene. Because if He doesn't, you have nothing but religion to stand on. And if you stand before a holy God with only religion to stand on, you will be condemned to hell. Because without relationship, religion fails. But relationship without religion is a failure. Because you can have a relationship. It may be a distant one. It may be a far-fetched one. It may be an imaginary one. But you see, the combination of the two fulfills themselves in each other. Having a relationship and having a relationship, having a religion and having a relationship establishes each other. Because you don't fail in what the scripture says to do because the relationship leads you and guides you in the direction that you're supposed to go. According to the word that it says that you would become likened unto God because you would know Him and you would know that He is working in you to accomplish His purposes. It's not just about making some rules and following them. Any idiot can do that. Any donkey could speak the Word of God. So you see, it's not religion and it's not just relationship, but it is knowing God. And they shall know me and I will be found of them if they would seek me with all of their heart, with all of their soul, with all their mind, with all their strength. Do you know God? 
Because that's the question you need to ask yourself every day. Every single day of your life. Do you know God? You should say yes. You should. And you should say yes over and over and over again until it is a reality in your heart. You should say, I die except I know you, God. Like David said, I perish except that I create a house for you, oh God. You should be that serious about your relationship with God. Because if you're not, if you're not, you're bargaining with eternity and condemning yourself to hell. Because you're playing the game of walking a fine line about where are you when it comes to grace and mercy. Is it being extended to you because you have a right relationship with God? Or do you not have any relationship at all because you based it upon what you thought was being taught from the pulpit, from the teacher, from the pastor, from the elder, from the deacon, from whoever it is, the minister, the priest, or whoever it is that you follow? Because you see, Jesus spoke to each one of the seven churches in the letters in the book of Revelation. But he addressed the people in them. God addresses you personally. No one is going to be condemned because of a church. No one. A person is condemned by their own actions and attitudes that they have in their own heart based upon their relationship with God. So where are you at? Have you and are you developing a personal relationship with God? Because if you're not, you're wasting time watching videos, you're wasting time studying, you're wasting time doing all of these religious things. You need to get on your face, talk to God, and get real. Because otherwise you're going to hell. The bottom line. There is a way of escape, but it does manifest itself to those that do walk with God and have God in them. Because First John tells us that he who has the Son has life. You only think you have the Son by saying, oh, well, you know, I was told. Let me get this right. Let's see. Um, I was told that if I confess my sin and I ask Jesus into my heart, that I would be saved and that because I have asked him that he comes in, so I just automatically accept that, that is true, and that I just have to put faith in it, and then it, it happens. You sure? Now, some of that's true, and some of that applies. Because for those that, with a pure heart, have asked, with a sincere motivation, have cried out, with the desire and want God has honored, but you see, there's more to it than that. Because there's a lot of people that don't really ask God into their life. They say the words, they do the actions, they go through the motions because they just want to be secure from hell but live like they're in heaven and get away with murder in between. Because the reality is, is that if you haven't really put yourself into the place of, I must know God, I must find Him, I must agonize until I get to the place where I know that I know Him, that He has come into me, He has lived inside me, and I see that, and I know that, and I hear Him speaking to me, and I have proven it in a bunch of demonstrable means that even we on video here talk about how you could put the circumstances of your life together and see that God is moving and talking to you through circumstantial ways. So there's a variety of ways that God can speak to you to start with, but you should pursue that. And the pursuit of it is, even as A.W. Tozer said, the pursuit of holiness, but the pursuit of it is like a deer that pants after the water. You must want it. You must desire it. Then you will hear him speak audibly. You will know that he speaks to you internally. You will know that he speaks to you circumstantially. That all three of these will bear witness in your life. Because if you're not doing that, I question if you have a relationship. Because you may have a relationship with the Bible, and thank God you do. Praise the Lord. I'm thrilled about people that have a relationship with the Bible. Lots of theologians have a dynamic relationship with the Bible. I hear all kinds of Bible scholars telling me all these relationships that they have with theology and doctrine and dogma and they throw them at me constantly and I simply ask them, I say, well great, so what did Jesus tell you today? Well, ah, you know what the Bible says. No, I don't. What did Jesus tell you? Well, you know the Bible says this and they tell me the doctrine. What did Jesus say? I don't care about your doctrine, your dogma, your doctrines or anything else that you've been through in school or wherever you've gotten it from. I don't care that you have a relationship with the Bible. I'll eat you if you have a relationship with the Bible because I already know that. 
I know how well it is able to be used and abused in any way, shape, or form that any man would want to do because it's called religion, and it's been done. So because it's been done, I've seen it. It's easy to do. But relationship, you can't. You can't abuse a relationship with God because God standing before you is a reality check. It is an intervention by someone greater than you are, and you can't do anything about that. You can't manipulate it. You can't change it. You can't rearrange it. You can't deny it. It's a fact of reality. And that's the point. Do you have that kind of relationship with God today? I am here. I am here as truly as I was with my disciples of old. Here to help. Here to bless you. Here to company with you. Do you know, even yet, my children, that this is the priceless blessing of your lives? That I would live with you? I forgive you. As you have prayed me to, I forgive you. For all neglects of my commands, I forgive you. For all the times that you pray to start anew, I forgive you. For all the times that you haven't sought me out, I forgive you. And today, as you start anew, I forgive you. Study my words, carry them out unflinching. As you do this, you will find that you are miracle workers, that the miraculous is just as normal as the normalcy that you once thought was so not miraculous. You will find that you are workers together with me, that I am working in you, and you are working for me. Remember this, not what you do, but remember what you are. I am in you, so what you are is what I am. That is me working in you. Changed by my spirit, you are becoming. Shedding one garment, so to speak, of the spirit into another. From glory to glory, changed into the image of the incorruptible God that I said you would know, even my Father. For he has come as I said he would, and so do I. As you grow, as you know, listen to me. You know, when I read something like that, I think, God, it's you. I listen. I obey. I do. Whatever you want, God, take me to you. For surely in you I find mercy and grace. Surely in you I find forgiveness. I find compassion. I find the sensitivity of your spirit to move me in the way that I need to go. Direct me, Lord. For you, I know. That's what you need to find. That's what you must go after. That's what you must pursue daily. Oh, at first it may not feel like you're a Christian. It may not feel like you have a relationship with God. But you see, that's kind of what a relationship's all about. Getting to know someone. Getting to know Jesus. Growing in your knowledge of Him by way of reading, talking, and developing. Don't expect that you're already there. Recognize that you've got a long ways to go. And God is working in you to bring you there so that you will have the fullness of God living in you. Then, when you do, you'll be walking in the Spirit. Then you will hear His voice. Then you will walk and talk with God in a way that will blow your mind and manifest itself in such a way that you won't even have a doubt as to whether or not you're saved. You just doubt whether or not anyone else is because you can't imagine that someone would want to do those things that they're doing. Why would they want to get into arguments, debates, strife, anger, ma wrath, malice? Why would they even cause divisions when they could just walk and talk with God every day and learn from Him as though sitting at His lap? Don't you want to be like that? Did you know... Are you aware? Behold. Glory to God. By what Jesus has said. You can.